talking about, you know, you're talking about Rich Lerner. Yeah, Rich Lerner. Thank you. He, I just say that because the one time I he came and spoke at a IJGA banquet, I fell asleep twice. But <laughs> listening to Brandel and Frank talk about when Zach Johnson won in 07 when the weather was so bad. And the weather's going to be bad here. Right. You know, they're talking right. 18 to 19 mile an hour winds with gusts up to 30 mm-hmm. plus. Mm-hmm. That golf course is hard enough when it's perfect. Mm-hmm. When this weather, wind gets to blowing, this golf course can be ridiculous. You realize Zach Johnson came out of absolute nowhere. Yeah, he had won on tour, but his world ranking was way down. Right. He'd only I think he'd missed a cut seven times yeah. in the master or in the majors that he played. Nobody even knew who where all of a sudden boom, he wins. Then he wins the British now. And now he's one of the top players in this that and the other. I just think with the way the weather is, it opens this can of worms up to everybody, not just your Rory's and Bubba's and well, we, we remember, done, yeah, right? we remember 2011. Charles Schwartzel comes in 16 groups ahead of the of the you know the leaders. Mm-hmm. Birdies the last four holes yep. and ends up winning this thing in the clubhouse. He had already changed clothes. He had already done this. He had already done that. He wins this thing. And so, I'm thinking this year, although Sunday's weather looks to be perfect, that's Augusta. That's the Augusta weather. It's going to be the Augusta temperature, the Augusta humidity. It's going to be, you know, mild to timid winds. Um, It's going to be a shootout. And that's that's what – honestly, I think that's what they're hoping for. I really, really do. And, and, you know, you just – you look at it, though, through the years. I mean, after watching the the documentary on Mr. Nicholas the other day, 86 – he posted early. Yeah. He's in there. He's sitting there, and all of a sudden he's he like. He had to wait three groups. Norman goes birdie, 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 and all of a sudden he's like going, I got to get up and move. I can't sit here and bring him luck. He goes, not that I want to cause anybody bad luck, but I got to move. Mm-hmm. And then, poof, coming into 18. You know, there's the high, there's the wide right. You know, the what's his name? It was the Buffalo Bills But we knew with right. Norman it was coming. Oh, yeah. It was inevitable. It was coming. And we've Tom seen Kite. it with Mize. We've seen it with others. It, we knew with Norman at Augusta it was coming. There was The wheel was coming off the cart at some point. Yeah, you knew it would. And you're watching you know, Tom Kite come in there, and you're thinking Nicholas has posted it, but Kite's got a chance. This, that's the guy that doesn't waver. He doesn't choke. He does, you know, he's just calculated, and he hit a good putt. Yes, he did. You know, If a little more speed, it goes in. A little more break, it's perfect. But, yeah. You know, you just you look at how many things have happened in the past. Look at Norman the year with Faldo. I mean, gosh almighty. I mean, it's like, dude, where where'd you go? I mean, he, he can't get it over the water at fifteen. Doesn't matter if he gave him a free throw. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just he would well there was choke just, like that. There were certain things, and also too, you look at certain years like Freddie, for example. You know, when Vern Lundquist makes the comment, if he goes at this pin, he's missed it right. Mm-hmm. Lo and behold, he goes at the pin with a miss, and it comes up on the, the down apron of number 12. And they still don't know how it stayed there. To this day. They have no idea. I don't. I and I've walked the grounds there. 50 times. They didn't cut it that, that, that night or that morning. It still doesn't matter. It it's doesn't still matter. faster well, than any greens we got here. You're, yeah, but when it's cut, it's really – I, I I've heard that somewhere that that it hadn't been cut, and that's why they thought the ball stayed up. Mm. Uh, it still, that slope and the way that is there is pretty amazing. But it, it's it was his year. It, it, it was. It, that's right. But I mean, yeah, that's my point. But here's it's, the it's you. And here's the thing, George. Going back to it, and you know, again, harping on Greg Norman. But if there was ever a golf course built for an individual, it was that one built for him. And he just couldn't handle the heat in the kitchen. Yeah. Well, he had one taken away from him. Let's be fair about it. I mean, he did. Uh, Miles, if, if he doesn't go in the hole, he goes in the water. Sure it does. I was standing right there. Yeah. I mean, right. There was no doubt about no that. No question. But it's one of the greatest shots in history. Well, yeah. Hey. Well, the first three days of this thing, especially this afternoon, tomorrow, and Saturday with the weather forecast, if you're looking at low ball hitters, the length is not going to – you know, you're you're looking at those that can control their ball, their ball flight. Yeah, and they I don't can, think it's so much the low ball hitters. It's just a matter of who can hit it solid and who can control the shape that they're trying to work it. Right. You know, because they're going to have to work it against 
against the wind to control it. Because if you're working it with the wind and it hits on those greens, that thing's gone to grannies. Yeah, it'll never. It's, it'll, it's, it's down, just going to keep going. It's down picking up a pimento cheese I'm, sandwich. I mean, th- th- these greens literally this afternoon, folks, when it gets to be 2, 3 o'clock, it's going to be like you standing in your bathtub and trying to put it to the drain and trying to stop it before it gets there. Good point. It ain't going to happen. CBS Sports came out with their quote-unquote 2016 Masters field rankings, 1 through 89, which is how many players we have. Um, I'm going to read the first, say, I'll read the first couple of names and then we can speak on that. By their predictions, the number one player that should be looked at as far as the favorite for this year's Masters is Bubba Watson, according to this prediction. You won't get me to disagree with that. Yeah, so we know Gene's pick. Okay, number two, Jason Day. They just figure that so many times, none, you know, like they mentioned Charles Schwartzel's win back in 2011. I'm mildly concerned about his back injury. If he's okay, he could win by three strokes is the way it was commented here. Well, I mean, you listen to what Jack Nicholas said about the young man. He goes, yeah, he talked about quitting golf. He goes, if he's going to quit golf, somebody needs to have his head examined. Mm-hmm. He goes, he might have been 11 years old when he thought about quitting, but this kid's the most talented out here today. Well, number three, Adam Scott. Number four, Jordan Spieth. Number five, Rory McIlroy. Now, we'll stop there. I honestly think you're going to find out whether Adam Scott's putter works or not this week. Sure. Because he hadn't played on those like these with that new stroke, sure. with that putter. I mm-hmm. think it'll be easier. Mm-hmm. I, don't. I do. And we'll see if Jordan actually got his putting stroke. Because, boys, I'm telling you, I was watching some satellite coverage on Monday. And Jordan was on the putting green out at the practice area, and he was with his coach. And I'm watching him putt, and it was it looked like a 20 handicapper sitting there. I'm it was ugly. Jabs, stabs, sweeps, cuts. He was doing things with that putter head that you would expect him to do with a driver. Yeah. And I was shocked. Totally shot. And the instructor's on his belly, laying on the green, trying to figure out what's happening to the head at impact. Michael, his caddy, is just standing behind him with his hand in his head like this. I mean, it was ugly. I still go back to the last eight rounds the young man's played on that golf course. Yeah. Yeah. I think something... Magical just happens when he sets foot and they ring the bell. I hope so. I don't predict it, but I, I think hope he's, so. I think he's hit the panic button a little early, and that's what we're seeing, mm-hmm. uh, to be honest. Let's, let's go to number six, and this seems to be the quote-unquote media's darling favorite this week. You know how Golf Channel has a tendency to do this and everybody else that covers in the media – Rosenforts and the others has the tendency of kind of picking one individual and they, you know, do the exposés of him and the interviews with him and no, 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 no. We get the guess. I got the name right there if you can't read it. I can't see that far. Ricky Fowler. I see what you're talking about. Ricky well, seems to be, I mean, I heard a comment again yesterday and again this morning, and there's a lot of regurgitation of the same comment. Okay, it happens every year. But they're commenting on how Butch has got Ricky's ball flight down, how he's able to control his ball flight better this time versus even when he was in the in the Players' Championship, ended up winning that. Okay? And they're saying, no, nah, this is Ricky's time. This is Ricky's turn. Okay? He's certainly capable of winning the golf tournament. I will say that. I believe that. I think watching him play, and I know it was a little while ago, but when he won at the tournament players' championship, yeah. that was one of the most amazing. Sure, it was. How he played seventeen. Oh, three awesome. straight twos. I mean, who does? You and I sat here and just flabbergasted. I mean, we were tweeting back and forth. And six birdies in a row coming home to get into the playoff. Sure, sure, unbelievable. But I'm going to tell you this right now, folks. After watching him in Phoenix. The man does not have the patience to win if the weather's bad, good, indifferent on this golf course. Well, 
If you don't have patience and know when to take your medicine, make a par and get out of Dodge and take your chances on the next one, you got a problem. And for him to hit driver on the 17th hole like he did in Phoenix, yeah. it to shows me that his brain, when the heat gets on and his ego takes over or he his adrenaline gets going, he can't control his emotions, and you will not win Augusta if you can't control your Well, emotions. according to these predictions or whatever, Ricky's number six, Louis Oosthuizen, which is uh, a favorite of mine, as you know. Louis Oosthuizen, um, he finished second in 2014. He's familiar with the golf course. He's got the right um, psychological makeup. Nothing really affects him. He's a Dutchman. His heart rate is at 18, he's no like, matter what. He's like Ernie. I mean, they're both. And I say that, and pl- folks, don't get angry with me. I say that lovingly because Ernie Ells is a close friend. I don't know Louie, but every person that I've known from my trips and time in South Africa that are Dutchmen from Dutch descent, speak Afrikaans, they are like that. They are just as laid back. Now, when they get mad, get out of the way. But most of the time, they're pretty just chill. And that's why these guys play so well. You look at them, they don't show emotion. Well, the comments related to this prediction of Louie being in the seventh favorite pick category is little Louie might have the purest swing in the world right now. And think about this, folks. He's also four strokes from being a four-time major championship winner. Think about that. A lot of people in that situation. Sure. But Louie's one of them. Well, yeah. So. How about that, Justin? Number eight, Justin Rose. Solid player. Capable of winning. Two top tens last four years. Number nine, Phil Mickelson. Number ten, and you I ju- think you, this is a sleeper. You're jumping over Mickelson that quick. Yeah. I no. think he deserves a couple of comments. Well, go, 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 go right ahead, Gene. I tried to stop it, but go right ahead. I knew it was coming. What? Here we go. He's 45 years old. Yeah. He can still play. Yeah. And this weather's going to be a benefit to him. Okay. Do you and Charlie sleep together? I mean, do y'all actually spoon and all that? Okay. I heard Charlie's comments this morning. Hideki Masayama in 10. Can a Japanese pull this off? No. Possibly, but no. Okay. Now, I'm going to quickly go 11 through 15 because the people that are in 11 through 15. Well, you can take 12 and just mark him right off. I, I understand. Number 11, Dustin Johnson. Number 12, Jimmy Walker. 13, Patrick Reed. 14, Brooks Kepka. Mm-hmm. I like yes. it. I like it. And I like, I like the next one. And 15, my long shot, mm-hmm. Sergio Garcia. Mm-hmm. No way. Okay. Well, your your response to Sergio is my response to Phil. That's fine. Everybody's got their own opinion. That's fine. There's one player I don't think you mentioned. Did you mention Zach Johnson? Is he on that list? If he's not, he should be. Well, he's not on again. The list. He's not on the list. So I go back up again to remind everybody. I'll go down through. Number one, Bubba. Number two, Jason Day. Number three, Adam Scott. Four, Jordan Spieth. Five, Ricky. Oh, excuse me. Not five. Five is Rory. Six, Ricky. Seven, Louie. Eight, Justin. Nine, Phil. Ten, Hideki. Eleven, Dustin. I mean, there's a couple people that think Dustin, this is his year. All I know is that's the funniest thing I ever heard in my life with Mickelson and DeChambeau and Dustin. And Mickelson and them were talking about all the science of the, how putts break and the clubs and the ball and the trajectory. And Dustin goes, dude, if I played with y'all the whole time, I wouldn't be able to break 100. Mm-hmm. <laughs> did you did you catch what uh, did you check, catch what Mickelson said to him walking down number one off the tee box? No. Yeah. They're going down. Phil looks over and goes, Dustin, what y'all doing tonight? He goes, well, I don't know. Paulina's got, we're, we're going to somebody's house for dinner or whatever. And then Dustin looks over and goes, what you doing? And Phil goes, champion's dinner. <laughs> How about that? That's pretty and good. Dustin looks over and goes, you set me up for that, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, you did. Phil goes, yep. Yeah, d- duh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, he kind of looked like a, a, I don't know, a water buffalo out of water playing with that group. DeChambeau was, I mean, him and Mickelson were. They had a blast. They Columbia were talking field. rocket science. Oh, yeah. I mean, the whole way. Well, this kid's a physics genius. <laughs> I mean, he, he's, it's pretty impressive. I'm having to lift the. Um... Okay, uh, another report that came out we're talking about, uh, and we'll be wrapping it up here in just a minute. Uh, Stats Formula predicts the Masters champion by Bill Cooney. Uh, he's at PGATour.com. Uh, basically, they broke these down into players, driving distance, putting stats, scrambling, and a total value. And the lowest total value means that they're the higher ranking in these particular categories. So the lower points accumulated means that you're the favorites stat-wise to win the Masters this year. Number one, favored to win the Masters this year, according to this report, Phil Mickelson. At 54 points. Second, Jason Day at 92. Third, Mark Leishman. Fourth, Ricky Fowler. Fifth, Brent Snedeker. Sixth, Charles Schwartzel. Seven, Jordan Spieth. Eight, Adam Scott. Nine, Roy McElroy. And ten, Justin Rose. Interesting. Notice Bubba's not anywhere in here. Yeah, but he will be this week. Okay, so I just thought I'd hand that out again by this stats report uh, written by Bill at PGATour.com. Phil looks to be the statistical favorite for the 2016 Masters. Is this the last hoorah? No. I don't see him win it. I just don't. Maybe a third, maybe a fifth. I just don't see him. Right, at 45 years old, I don't care if he wins or not. The guy finishes top 10, guaranteed. Okay. All right. All right. Um, we'll hold off on our picks. I've made a couple of mine already. I kind of disclosed them, but that's fine. Um, we'll hold off for Pro Golf Talk Live. Is that good, guys? That's good. Okay. Give you a chance to look on the computer and see if, if you guys are doing well. And my, picks are written, my picks are written down. Mine too. Thank you very much. The only guy that's going to be looking for live updates is, I'm not going to mention any names, but his He's initials are Hugh Roy the Third. Okay, folks, TGD Radio and TV are produced and broadcast by the Zeus Digital Network for thegolfdirector.com. Be sure to check out our featured course pages where you'll find up-to-date information about course conditions, specials, much more. Need help with the next golfing vacation? Just call Dave right here at the Golf Director, 844-GO-GOLF-1, 844-464-6531. Y'all couldn't jump in on that? You were going too fast. Thank you. All of our programming is archived for listening and viewing on demand. Click on the TGD Radio TV tabs in the menu screen at thegolfdirector.com. You can find us on over one billion. Thank you. You got it. Devices at iTunes, Audio Realm, TuneIn, YouTube, Ustream, Roku, Periscope, Catch.me, and, of course, Blueberry. For Hugh Roy III, Professor Gene Weldon, I'm George Honeycutt, Jeff Gilder behind the glass. I want to thank you for tuning in. There's more golf news and information coming up next. You ain't gonna accuse me of cheating. You think I'm gonna help you? No. Kiss my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man.